everybody. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Welcome back to Spence Show Hunting Productions. Um, we're in the midst of the coronavirus here in the United States um, and of course around the world. So we've been asked to social distance ourselves from each other. So what a fantastic time to uh, get your knives out and your hunting knives, even your kitchen knives, and give them a good sharpening. Um, it's uh, better than waiting till the last minute, either not getting a good sharpness on it or um, not doing it at all. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> this has been a requested video and uh, I had taken a little bit of time off from the videos. I was uh, had a lot of things going on uh, this past uh, January and February and I uh, didn't did want to pressure myself and not bring you out a good video. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to talk today about some different options that you have uh, with uh, sharpening knives. And of course, me being a chef, I'm going to have to tell you what I like and what I don't like. Um, but that doesn't mean, and before anybody gets, uh, you know, uh, hair, um, that they uh, are going to give me a bunch of thumbs downs and bad comments. Here is I'm not telling you this is the only way to sharpen a knife. This is what I prefer. This is the way I was taught uh, by uh, chefs before me. And I find that it really is truly the best way to sharpen a knife because... I have a lot of people who come and ask me, wow, your knives are so sharp. Could you sharpen my knife for me? And so let's go ahead and go with the video and uh, we'll go through here and uh, show you what we got. So one thing I do want to stress here is uh, to begin with is knife quality. <clears throat> if uh, you go down here to the local by and large and uh, store and you buy a, a three or five or an eight dollar knife off of the, uh, the shelf there, and take it out of the package and it seems really sharp at first but it goes dull really easily um, if you do know anything about sharpening a little bit uh, you try to sharpen it it holds an edge for you know very short period of time and then all of a sudden it's dull again a lot of that has to do with the way but uh, the quality of the steel that you are buying that, that that the knife's made out of so you you get what you pay for um, if you want a good quality knife and that's fine if, if you're comfortable with that and you want to use that knife and you just sharpen it every once in a while and then throw it away and buy a new one, if you're fine with that, then, then good good for you. Um, that you know, There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I do know that uh, it's very frustrating to pull a knife out and it seems sharp and then you start to cut something and then all of a sudden it's dull again. Um, and you risk, the, uh, you risk cutting yourself easier with a dull knife than you do with a sharp knife, obviously, because you're trying to put a lot of force down onto or into whatever you're cutting. Um, and by doing that, that causes you to slip and uh, send you to the hospital, or if you're a self-medicating person, stitch it up yourself. But uh, um, so what we want to do is you, you want to buy a good quality steel and a good quality knife with a good quality steel is going to cost you a couple dollars. Um, being a chef, people ask me, you know, well, I got this here knife, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And, and, uh, but, but it just doesn't seem to want to hold an edge. Can you do anything with it? No, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't do anything with it. But, um, they asked me to recommend them some knives to use, uh, to buy that would be good quality knives. And a lot of times they balk at the price, but if you're balking at the price, you have to, to think about that light, that knife for a chef last might last him a good uh you know six seven eight ten years depends you know uh might even last him a quarter of his career uh and then he's redoing the you know repurchasing the knife as he goes along because you know the reason is is because of the amount of use that he's giving out into that knife which should tell you a lot about the quality of steel that he's buying so um you uh so some of the the, the knife companies you can buy a very good you really need to look for some good quality German steel, some good quality um, Japanese steel. Um, there is even some good quality uh, American steel out there also. Some of the best knives and are not getting paid or in, reimbursed or, uh, or plugged or anything for anybody in this video. Nobody. Um, this is all on my own. Uh, I'm not asking them, you know, for me to give them a recommendation, you know, you know, a little bit of kickback. That's not the case here. Uh, some of the knives, I'm just trying to be uh, upfront and honest with you. Some of the knives that you can buy um, uh, that are very good quality, a lot of German steel is uh, very, very good quality knives. And a lot of uh, Japanese steel is very, very good quality knives. Um, 
some of the name brands you might look for, Mercer. Mercer has really come up in the quality of their knives uh, over the past, you know, probably 20 years. Um, the uh, Hankels, uh, we all have heard of Hankels knives before. Um, Wustoff, uh, they have uh, different levels, and each knife company has different levels of uh, knives that, you know, the quality of knives that they have. Um, but usually in, in the ones that I'm talking about now are pretty much all professional grade knives. Um, another uh, quality knife would be Forstner. And in fact, I saw a video here on YouTube where they were doing some uh, comparisons on uh, knives, all the name brands of knives, and uh, Forstner came out on top. Um, so Forstner is a very good quality knife. Um, Wustoff and Hankos, you're going to pay a good, good amount of money for. Uh, common uh, French knife like this. This is a French knife or a cook's knife. Uh, this is a Mercer at this uh, right here. So um, it's probably going to cost you around fifty to seventy dollars. Wow! But this knife, I've had this knife for over twelve years, and I use it constantly. So uh, some other uh, another. Uh, uh, company would be uh, Chicago Cutlery. They produce some very good knives also. And really what uh, depends on your knives has, is how they're forged. You want to try to get a full tang. I'm going to bring these, I'm going to bring my stuff to the camera rather than trying to bring the camera to me. So this is a full tang knife, okay? And this is a forged knife. And this is a German steel, okay? Um, and uh, anything you see that it's just kind of, uh, I don't even have one here, uh, where it's just kind of like, uh, uh, you can see that how it's very cheaply put into the handle or how the handle connects to it. And uh, the quality and craftsmanship really will tell you a big difference there. Um, and also, it has to do with uh, how they forge the knives um, and uh, how, they, how they temper the steel. Um, the steel, um, tempering steel is by heating it and cooling it. Um, they change the molecular structure of the knife, or not change it, but they align the molecules in the knife and um, basically give, making various degrees of hardness in the, uh, 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 on the steel itself. So another part of, of, uh, of a knife is using the right knife for the right job. So um, if I'm going to be... Uh, Gutting a deer, I'm not going to want to use this knife. This is the wrong knife. I'm going to want to use something like this. It has a skinny blade and it also has a gutting blade on it. So if we can look at the difference there, everybody knows what the, these knives look like. So I'm not really going to uh, get too involved in that. Um, some other things here. This is a boning knife. Um, this is not a general all-around chopping knife and everything else. That's what this is for. Um, this is a boning knife. This is for taking out small seams, going around bones and, and the legs or on, or on the uh, ribs and that sort of thing. Um, this knife here is designed as a vegetable knife. This is not a cleaver. It looks like a cleaver, but it is not a cleaver. In fact, give me one second and I'm going to show you what a cleaver is. So, okay, here I'm back. I had to go get it. This is a cleaver. This is made to chop large joints and bones. This is for fine uh, vegetable work, cutting uh, small dice, large dice, uh, julienne, and those sorts of things. So, and I actually, now that I have this, I actually want to tell you, show you, tell you, I'll start again. I want to show you something else. But in the meantime, this is a paring knife. This is an all-around uh, general kitchen knife. It's used for uh, peeling vegetables, uh, cutting uh, the skins off of onions, peeling apples, that sort of thing. I see so many people trying to use a paring knife for everything in the kitchen. They got this big piece of meat and they're trying to cut it with this paring knife and they don't understand why they end up cutting themselves or the, the piece of meat looks like you used a chainsaw to, to, uh, to cut it in half with. That's why, the right knife for the right job. So, in saying that, another thing that we might want to talk to you, and I'm not going to get really in depth into it, is if we notice the difference of the, of the, the appearance of these two uh, steels. This steel on this cleaver is made from carbon steel. This steel on this knife is made from stainless steel. 
So this knife won't rust. Um, it does get a very good edge and very nice. Some of the old cooks and even some cooks today prefer the carbon steel. Carbon steel is a little bit easier to put an edge onto it and it holds its edge a lot better um, than, than the stainless steel. The stainless steel just stays very nice looking as long as you have to do is wipe it off and you're done. Carbon steel, it gets this funny look to it. Um, and you'll get like uh, staining on it and that sort of thing. And you have to maintain these knives. Number one, when you want to clean it, you have to use some vinegar or you have to use some lemon juice, something acidic, and it will clean the, it will clean off the carbon steel. And if you got a really bad spot, you, you can use a little steel wool on it. I don't recommend that to clean it all the time. Um, and then you dry it and really uh, by uh, standards, you should put oil your carbon steel so that it does not rust. This will not rust. This will rust. So there's a lot more care involved in these. That's why generally most everybody uses a stainless steel knife. So in case anybody wants to know, this is a very, this, this, this cleaver is a very older style cleaver. It's very hard to get a cleaver of this quality. I don't know what it weighs, but it has to weigh at least three or four pounds. Um, and it's very thick steel, okay? It's very older time uh, cleaver. I have not really seen anything like this for sale anymore. Um, I actually look for these at sales or places that I go. I see people are selling them um, just to get rid of them because they think they're on a piece of junk. Well, you clean them up and you've got yourself a good quality um, cleaver. Now this cleaver, and actually this is a Dexter, or De uh, I believe, uh, I'm not sure how the cord, how the, how it coordinates there is, um, it used to be Dexter Russell or Dexter. I'm not sure how that company works like that, but that's what this is, it's a Dexter. And they still do sell Dexters today and they are very good knives. If you wanna know what other kind of knives I have here, I said this is a Mercer, okay? This one here is a Wusthof. Now this one here and this one here also, very similar looking to this one, uh, are Black Diamonds. Um, and the Black Diamonds uh, is sold by one of my pre food purveyor companies. Um, I don't want to plug them at all, um, but th what they're doing, and I'm not going to say who makes them, uh, they uh, basically have a company, one of the companies that I told you about uh, on here, actually make these and put their brand name on it. So you're actually getting a very good quality knife there. Um, now, what I do want to talk about next is uh, sharpening steels. There's a big controversy or misconception of what a sharpening steel is. This does not technically sharpen your knife, okay? Um, now we do have three kinds of steels that you can choose from. We have, this is a magnetic steel. I will explain all three of them as we go along. We also have a ceramic steel, which I do not own. Um, and we also have a diamond steel. Now there's been a lot of uh, hype and I see them all over the place, diamond this, diamond that, diamond sharpening stone, diamond steel, diamond uh, for sharpening. Um, and they are good, they're great. As long as you use them for what they're for, okay? What their purpose was meant for. So with uh, sharpening, a, uh, sharpening your knife, uh, you might be cutting, you might be cutting along and as you cut, your knife, uh, you know, maybe a day or two later, like uh, sometimes in uh, actually in a kitchen, it'll be halfway through the day. Your knife just doesn't seem to be quite as sharp as what it was. Well, it's still sharp, but if we were to put this knife under a microscope, um, the blade starts to go like this the, on the very tip of the blade. You can't see it. It's microscopic. I mean, it's very, very, uh, not microscopic, but very, very, uh, you really have to look through it at, through a microscope there. Um, the, the blade starts to get wavy and little burrs end up forming over top of your blade, which then block your ability to cut. So basically what you're doing with this steel, you don't take a dull knife and sharpen it with a steel. You touch up a sharp knife with a steel. So this magnetic steel is, I take it across like that, and what it does is it straightens that blade again and it cuts off them little tiny 
pairs of metal that are blocking over top of your blade, which then gives the appearance that it sharpened it. So that's what this is for. Magnetic steel, the reason it's magnetic is as you bring it across and you bring it across, basically what it's doing is it's catching that metal and it's holding that metal. So then, uh, hence the name magnetic, so that it collects onto your knife. And every once in a while, uh, with the magnetic steel, or any steel, but to be honest with you, is you need to wipe it. And if we can see, I'll bring this up here, you can see the dirt that was on there. That's not dirt, that's metal. And that's what it's supposed to do. That's why you need to clean your steel so your steel can, works properly. Something else. There's two ways to sharpen. Now, I'm a little out of practice this way, is you bring the knife down and across. Um, I uh, refrain from doing it this way anymore. I cut myself pretty good one time and, uh, and, and not paying attention to what I was doing many, many years ago. And I just learned to do it this way. I do it away from myself. But what you need to do, either way, up or down, you need to make sure that you start your knife all the way back at the edge and bring it forward. So it's down and across. Down and across. And you need to do the same amount on each time. You don't need to do it hypersonic. Chefs do it hypersonic because they've been doing it all their lives and they just got that fast at it. Um, then you can come back and you can grab your tip like that. That's all you need to do. Um, so, we can do that with any of these knives. It's important. You don't have to go fast. You can even just go slow like that. That's all you need to do. You just make sure you get the whole of the knife blade back to front. And that'll resharpen your knife. If you try that and your knife still is very dull, then you need to put it on a knife sharpener. A uh, ceramic steel works the same as a magnetic steel, but obviously it's not magnetic. Um, and uh, some people prefer them. I don't really know a difference. I've used them. Uh, they work the same as a magnetic steel. I think maybe it might be a little bit of a price difference. Magnetic steels are a little bit more expensive, um, and uh, the ceramics are not uh, not quite as as expensive as as the magnetics, obviously. Uh, so. Here's my biggie. I really want to talk about this. Uh, this is diamond. Diamond stuff for sharpening. You really have to be careful with diamond steels, diamond stones, diamond anything for sharpen. Because basically what they're doing is they're taking up, this is a piece of aluminum, and they are encrusting this with diamond dust. So uh, what, they're, what you do is, first up, let me say this. This is equivalent to a number two stone, a medium uh, coarse stone. So it's not doing this, it is actually grinding your knife. And I've had cooks in the past and I've seen people doing this. Uh, I look at their knife and their knife is flat back here and all of a sudden it gets this ridge up and down. I don't know if we can show, this knife is not like that, but maybe I can show you um, it'll be flat here, and then it'll get a hump in there, and then come back down. So when they're cutting, their knife's not actually hitting the board. So when it's down against here, they've got this big hump. And they think, well, this knife's a piece of garbage. It's not sharp. It's not that it's not sharp. The uh, diamond tip steel or the diamond tip sharpener was used in the wrong way, and it messed up their knife. So what you... What, what, they're, what people might end up doing is they start their knife here and come down. And it, okay, so by doing that, it's not doing anything here, it's starting your grind here. So the back end of the knife ends up higher um, than the middle of the knife. And then of course the tip is gonna hit, hit the, the bottom when, you, when you, uh, you know, are cutting with your tip forward. So that's the problem with that. These can butcher your knife, or they can do a good job of helping you maintain a quick maintain of your uh, cutlery as you're cutting. So you, again, always start all the way at the back, and you come all the way down and across, all the way back. 
And on both of these, I'm keeping uh, about, you know, a 15, 8, 17 to a 20 degree angle on that. And I, I, I really like to have like 15 to 17 degree angles on my knives, depending on what type of knife I'm using. So, um, so we do that, then come back and follow it up. That is actually grinding your knife and, and actually grinding your knife away. You come back with your steel and straighten that and it pulls off any of the hair that come, that's being left from sharpening with the diamond tip. And you're ready to go. So please be careful with these knives. Um, I'm sorry, with these uh, steels. They are can butcher your knife or they can do a good job on your knife. Again, depends on if you use it in the correct way and what it's meant for. The other thing I want to really want to talk about is the angle of your knife. Um, each knife is ground by the manufacturer at an optimal angle. And when I see people, again, here's a steel. I had a cook that just did this over and over. He, he would put the blade like this and across, and, and he didn't understand why his knife wasn't getting sharpened. Again, even when we're stealing, we're using the steel or we're gonna be using uh, the, our sharpening stones, the angle is all about it. You need to keep that 17 to, well, 15 to 17 or 20 degree angle um, throughout the whole process. If you need to go slow, go slow. The only reason I can go fast is I've been doing it for 30 some years. So uh, it's just, it has become uh, a, a, just a habit. So um, next thing we're gonna show up here uh, is we're gonna show up uh, some of these uh, knife sharpeners. And again, I'm going to give you some opinions and it's not uh, dead set in stone. So I'm not down in any of these sharpeners. Um, I'm just telling you what the what would be the good part about it and what it, I don't like about it. And I'll even tell you that about the ones that I do like. We're going to talk about sharpeners. Um, we've got a couple different things out here on the market. I, I certainly don't have all of them that are on the market. Um, and But I do have a few here that kind of cover the basis of what's available. Um, here we have uh, what we would call a two-sided sharpening stone. Um, and the way this two-sided sharpening stone works is we have a medium and we have a fine. This one has two different colors on it. This one does not, but you can see, I'll try to get it up to the camera. Can you see there's a, like a different colors in the stone? I'm not using this one because it hasn't been cleaned. I used it for a while. Um, and basically the way that we clean these here, after you sharpen with these things for several times, uh, you need to clean the stone. Uh, some uh, They recommend you just run some hot water over it in a brush. Um, I usually actually like to use dish soap on it and because as you're pulling the oil out of that stone, uh, you're also pulling metal, the metal fragments that it collects, which clogs up the pores of the stone. So and then and what I do is then is uh, wash and rinse it off really good with hot water, and then I'll leave it dry for at least a day or two, and then I re-oil it. So. Um, another uh, type of sharpener here that we have is an electric sharpener. I'm going to try to cover up the name brands on it because I don't want them to uh, uh, come back here and give me any slack about it. But this is basically a an electric sharpener. And this electric sharpener is has a 20 degree angle on it, both sides. You're basically pulling your knife through this um, spinning stone inside of here. Then on the bottom here, you have basically a carbide bit or a ceramic bit that's actually um, acting sort of like a steel there for you. So um, that is an electric. Then we have what we call uh, a belt grinder. And on this belt grinder, um, I'm covering up the name brand here. I don't want any problems. Is This is electric also. You pull this down. It clicks in place and you put belts on here um, and you have like three or four different um, coarsenesses of belts that you uh, that you can run. And it, it runs around um, and basically what we're doing here is we are 
Um, this is a 20 degree angle. You put your knife down into it and then you're pulling it across both sides as the belt's spinning. Um, there is a 65 degree angle here. I don't know what you would use 65 degrees for. Maybe a scissors. I don't know. I've never tried it before. Um, but that is electric and that's how it works. And then we also have, I do want to point something out here. This here is, uh, the package says knife sharpener. Um, basically, this is not a knife sharpener. This is not sharpening your knives. It does sort of what a steel does, um, but there's very low quality. There's two carbide bits in here. Uh, and basically what you're doing is you're bringing your, if you can see that in there, let's bring it up to the camera. Um, as you're bringing your, pushing your knife down in and you're pulling it across and you can hear it scrape. You're supposed to go to one side and then to the other side. Um, but what I noticed with these here, it doesn't just sharpen this blade. It actually rubs on the up top of your knife here. This is a, a, a probably a 20 degree angle on it. Um, and then down here is the fine, which you do the same thing. I'm not going to run my knives on it very much because I don't like them. Um, they actually mar up your knife and, and such. Um, and you can change the degree of angle. If you want to use something like this, after you're sharpening, you're cutting a lot of stuff, and you just lightly bring it once or twice across here, that's fine. Um, it just actually gives you the appearance of sharpening your knife because it's pulling the metal, uh, the metal fragments off the, the metal burrs off the end of your knife again. I do not like these very much. Um, I don't, again, I'm going to say it again. Now, this is the third time I'm saying it. I'm not telling you that they're not, they don't work. They do work as they're, if they're used in the correct manner. Um, there's some downsides to some of these ones and there's some upsides to some of these ones, but um, By far use the one that you feel most comfortable with um, And I'm not trying to downplay anybody or any manufacturer uh, For uh, you know sending out something that's uh, not quality. Okay, so it's your choice so then We also have what we call the sharpening stand which I just talked about and has a court medium and a fine, uh, I have a professional grade one at my work that's a tri stand, has three stands and is set on a, on a uh, pivot and you oil the stand, it has a coarse, a medium and a fine. Uh, that's about a $250 uh, piece of equipment right there. So this is a little expensive. For here at home, uh, for what I do here at home, I use one of these, okay? Uh, another system that we have here, and I will show you the name of it, there are some other companies out there that make some things that are similar. Some are more expensive, some are a little bit cheaper. Um, this is a Lansky, and this is an oil stone. Um, and basically, they're putting your oil uh, on your stones here. You have varying degree coarseness of stones. I think it's, uh, let me see here, it's um, ultra fine, fine, medium, coarse, extra coarse. I think it's a little bit overkill, uh, but uh, it is nice. You can choose the stones or go. Uh, how far ever that you want with your with um, you know from coarse uh, stone to a fine stone. The reason you want to use a real coarse stone is if your knife is dull and it's very dull and you need to reshape or reset the cutting edge. Um, if you're letting your knife get that dull, don't because you uh, are actually having to regrind that edge again. Um, so that's what an extra coarse or a coarse stone would be for. A medium stone is to refine the edge a little bit, uh, polish it up a little bit, and make not uh, it, so that it's not such a coarse cut, coarse grind on there. It actually makes starts to finely sharpen your blade, um, and then you have a fine, which then polishes that blade uh, into a, you know the uh, sharpening machine or a uh, sharpened machine there. So. Um, and then you have an extra fine here that they're given, which you can polish that into almost like a mirror glaze, I guess, and uh, and and get, even get something that's even a finer tip and a little bit uh, uh, not so not coarse at all on your tip, well, actually on the on the edge of your cutting blade there. So anyway, so I'm going to go through each one of these here. I'm not going to run these on here, and I'm going to tell you what I like and I don't like about these. These are quick. Uh, and there's something that's very quick. You cannot change the angle. 
So if your knife's not a 20 degree angle, it's going to be a 20 degree angle. Um, and depending on what the knife is, uh, that angle might not be good for what you're using it for. The other thing is, is those are two rotating uh, stones inside of there. Um, and they, again, they are quick. They're easy to do. Keeps your, it keeps your angle. Um, and, and as you pull them through, you know, you're sharpening the hole of your blade. Um, but they can grind away your blade excessively. Uh, so in other words, you know, what your, light, your, might, your knife might last you, uh, just throwing it out there, eight, ten years or six or eight years. Uh, this will probably cut the life of it in half. Just because it's some more aggressive grinding. And as you pull these across, you know, you're really grinding away the blade. The other thing is, is they don't have... A medium or a fine. Um, this is just basically a coarse ground. It grinds it and you pull it through the carbide bit, which would be like a st uh, steel, uh, and then just uh, takes the metal burrs off. So um, I've seen people just grind and grind and grind and grind and grind. I'm thinking, oh no, they're not going to have any knife left. Um, this type of um, sharpener here, again, it's very nice because it gives you your angle. And I debate whether that's a 20 degree angle or not. I'm not really, sh I, without getting it out and checking it. Uh, but you're pulling it across. Let's see if we can get it over here. We're pulling it across like this. There's a guide here that stops you so you don't go too far. If it wasn't there, your knife would flip the whole way through. Um, and then you do both sides. It's a very convenient. It's handheld. You can do it by hand holding it. Um, if you have a power source you can plug into, it's electric. Um, the other thing, just the same as this item here, um, it will aggressively grind your blade off. You have a medium and a fine uh, belt. You're constantly changing the belts because uh, obviously it's like sandpaper. It's basically sandpaper that's going around there. And there it will aggressively grind your blade off. Um, and number two, the thing that I didn't say on the first one is because I wanted to mention it on both of these is as you're grinding, if you're grinding a lot, um, you will actually take the temper out of your tip. The, so we talked about tempering, it's the hardness of the blade. Well, when this blade gets very hot, um, the uh, temper comes out of it. And uh, I know that uh, when you're watching knife manufacturers on YouTube or on, you know, on the net, uh, you're seeing them use belt sanders and grinders. But if you watch them, they're constantly dipping their knife as they're grinding the edges into cold water because uh, they don't want to, that edge is heating up and they don't want to lose the temper out of their knife. So they're keeping their knife very, very cool. And if it's on a, any kind of a grinding stone, they're using a wet stone, they're using any oil or they're using water to actually lubricate that so they don't get the knife blade hot and lose the temper. Uh, if you lose the temper, you just will not be able to keep your knife sharp. Uh, you'll be able to get it Sometimes you might not even be able to get into the sharpness just because uh, it, it really butchers up the knife. So if you like these, go help for it and go ahead and use it. The only thing that I can tell you is to make sure that you take your knife all the way in and back because you'll end up grinding, as I showed, said about the diamond tip steel, you'll grind the flat the, uh, hump in here and then your knife will, instead of being a flat edge, it'll hump up and it won't cut correctly for you. So both of those, that's what both of those do. Um, the next thing I want to show you is we're going to talk about this wet stone. This is a wet stone. Uh, a lot of people don't like them. They don't understand them. So basically a wet stone just means that you're giving some kind of lubricant onto the stone. And uh, it's keeping your knife blade from, from gaining heat. Um, and also uh, it... Uh, helps with the friction of the knife against the, the stone, which then ultimately sharpens your knife better. So basically, what we're going to do here is you want to get and use a good honing solution. I've seen uh, the next thing that I would say would be close to the viscosity of this honing solution, this oil, uh, would be sewing machine oil. Um, you don't want to use car oil. You don't want to use olive oil or vegetable oil. Car oil is way too thick and it's going to clog up your stone. You're not going to get a very good result. Um, olive oil, you can use it in a pinch. 
Uh, vegetable oil, same thing. You can use in a pinch, cannoli oil, anything like that. But it's a heavy oil, and it will clog up your stones very quickly, okay? And uh, you actually, uh, it, it's a food-based item, so you actually your stone will start to smell rancid after a while. Um, and it's hard to get it to scrub out of there. Uh, honing solution or honing oil or like sewing machine oil. I hesitate even saying three-in-one oil. You can use three-in-one if you really have, like you're in a really bad pinch. Um, but just make sure you clean your stones off real good. Um, but you can see this is almost like water. It's uh, it's really cool. It's a, a, a very low viscosity. I don't know if you can see this in the camera, but it really truly is like water, almost like water, I should say. It's very low viscosity on it, which gives you a, a very good um, sharpening uh, uh, yeah, yeah, lost for words. Um, gives you a very good uh, base for sharpening on the stone. So this is my cleaner stone. And what I do is, this is just a piece of, of rag, towel. I lay this down uh, because I lightly wet this towel so that it doesn't move all over the place. And I'm going to move the camera down and I'm going to show you how to do this. What we're going to do is we're going to put this oil on here and then we're going to maintain an angle. And the way I find that angle is by putting the knife on here and feeling which way does this knife really sit really well. This is probably about a 17 degree angle on this knife. What we're going to do is we're going to pull it down and across. And if you notice, I'm holding my fingers on that knife all the way across. We're going to flip it over and we're going to do the same thing. And the reason I have my finger on that knife is that helps me to give flexibility. If I do it this way, I have a tendency to move the knife all over the place um, and also um, not get a good even uh, pressure on the knife. You don't want to push down hard. You just don't want it to slide across the top. You want to give a nice slight even pressure and I'm holding it and dot, pulling it with this knife, helping to guide it with this. So I'm coming down. If you notice, I got a hooked edge. So I'm coming down and across. I'm essentially making an X in the middle of this stone this by like doing this here so okay so we will go ahead and run this knife across and um, I will take and show you this small stone can actually do so what we want to do is we want to put our honing oil on there and we want to take it and we want to spread it across and I have paper towels here in case I need to wipe it off my hands or wipe it off the, the table but we're going to start all the way at the back end of the knife and we're going to pull it forward as I was just explaining. And now we're starting on the medium side. If it were dull and you had a coarse, you would use the coarse. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. It's just basic technique. You don't have to go fast. Nice, slight, even pressure. Get that X going down through here. I'll use a big knife. You'll see it. Um, and you uh, just keep going like that and you always do the same amount on one side as you do the other. I've seen some people do one side and then do the other side. That's okay. Um, I, I not really sure if I like that or not, um, but that's just a personal opinion. This makes me keep make sure that I by switching it, it's always making me think of what is the angle that I'm using. On that knife to cut the sharp, you know, as I draw it across the blade, I'm sorry, across the stone, it keeps me aware of my angle and I keep resetting it. I think if you keep going this way, you end up being too quick about it and you start to lose your angle. Now, as we do that about eight, ten times, we can start to feel this base really kind of coming back and not nice and sharp. Um, but there's still a ragged edge because it's a medium stone. So we're going to put this honing oil on the, on the uh, smooth stone. And I don't flood it, but I don't wipe off the excess because that pushing it around, that's what's taking, taking, keeping the, uh, the blade lubricated and it keeps uh, the metal fragments from being embedded into the stone itself. So if I were doing a knife that was very dull, you would actually start to see the get gray 
and the grayness would come from the knife, uh, the metal particles coming off the knife as, knife as I'm uh, drawing across the stand. So here we go. We're going to take that. I'm bringing that down across and I'm making sure I get that tip. Take your time. It's not a speed test. By taking your time, you um, are actually doing a nice job on there and you're really putting a nice edge on it and you won't have to come back to it again in a long time. You can just use the steel on it. Um, one thing I do want to talk about as I'm doing this is we were talking about the sharpening steels. Uh, some of the old timers used to use leather belts, leather, to sharpen their knives uh, or to draw their knives across. And that leather is essentially is doing the same thing. Now they did it backwards. They did it with their knife this way down the belt rather than this way. They didn't want to cut the belt. And you know, I'm, I'm out of the picture here. Uh, they don't want to do it this way because you're out of the belt. You're slicing the belt. So you would be doing it backwards. And basically they did that. That pulls the metal burrs off and straightens the blade. So if you want to carry something in the field, you feel that you need to do that uh, as you're, uh, you know, uh, prepping your animal after you've shot it. Um, just take a small piece of leather. It doesn't need to be big and you can draw it across that and it's very lightweight to carry um, and it uh, acts the same as a steel. And it'll polish your knife at the, also. So we're going to take this and we're going to take it across the steel and we're going to bevel you up just a little bit so you can see that I'm going across it, keeping that same angle as I ground with. And that's all you need right there. That's it. So let's see. That's a pretty sharp knife here. Let's see. That should probably take the hair right off my arms. Look at that. It's like shaving. Hey, if I forgot my razor. I could bring my razor away. Look at that. So, uh, I can't uh, say that uh, we can't disagree that uh, that's a uh, nice sharp knife. Um, I'm not going to take this knife and work on it um, as far as I did that one. I'm just going to show you we can use this small stone for a fairly large knife. So let's pull it out here. I'm going to do the same thing. See, I'm starting, get my edge. I'm checking my, my grind. And I'm coming all the way across. If you notice, I brought that again to the tip. One smooth motion, making that X in the middle. And now I'm working it on the core stone. Take your time. Guide just a little bit of pressure. You can hear it going across the stone. We'll take it across the fine. The, we want to wet this rag so it doesn't slide all over the place and I always wipe my knife between grinds. I don't want to bring that metal back to, over to the other stand. So again, down and across, down and across, down and across. You can hear the, actually hear the difference in the stain by the coarseness of the stain. Wipe your knife. Could use a little bit more. Again, down and across, down and across, down and across, down and across. Same angle as we're sharpening with. So, you want to get the tip, you can do the same thing right on the tip. Okay, so next, we have what we call the Lansky system. So, I went ahead and assembled this. Um, basically, they give you a nice little carrying case here. I'm not plugging them. I'm just telling you, I, I like this system, but I will tell you there are one or two downsides to this system. So... Um, basically, you got your stones lined up here. Uh, it's a place for your stones. They have some honing oil here. Uh, you have your metal rods. 
And basically the way this works is the you have your stand, the metal rod goes up underneath of the uh, up in underneath. And basically what the, the purpose of these metal rods are is to help you keep your angle. So this way this is designed, you can actually hold it with your hand. You might be uh, at the cabin and uh, you're outside, you don't have uh, anywhere to clamp the clamp to. Um, and basically you put in your uh, oil on your stone and then you can pick between these uh, at different angles. So these angles, you got a 17, a 20, a 25, and a 30 degree angle. So by doing, here's a 30. So you can see the difference between your 30. Here is the 20. And you basically put your oil on the stand. You hold it like this. And then you bring, bring it down and across. Now I don't like holding it and doing it because I don't feel that I can get... Uh, a good uh, steady base to it and then like I told you before you need to do as many times on one side as the other this is basically a, a, a stone like we just used it's just that are embedded into some plastic handles then you want to come back on the other side and do it again you just flip it over and you can do one side or do the other now for an extra cost it doesn't come with a kit um, you can actually get and put um, a uh, uh, table vise here where it grips onto it. This uh, is a piece that screws into your C clamp and it holds it. And then this slides on. Then you can, it's a little tight, it's kind of brand new, uh, flip it over and do both sides as you go along. We'll go ahead and do this paring knife. Let me just double check the angle here to make sure that we can see it in the camera. Yes, good. So we're gonna go ahead and oil this stone up and I'll just do a brief on it. Uh, this is the medium stone. And again, we'll just use some of theirs, their honing oil here. I believe theirs might be just a tad bit thicker, uh, but uh, that's okay because we are upside down so we want it to hold a little bit better. This is a little bit thicker, more, a little more like a sewing machine oil. So then you put a little bit of oil on there brush it back and forth and then I like the vise because it gives you a better steady steadiness here we'll go with the 20 degree this is my paring knife so I don't have to hold this thing out here and try to manipulate it as I go along the only thing I do is I hold this in place so actually I'm just tapping it with my hand I'm pulling it down and across if you don't make it to the end you can just come back and go again so again you need to make sure you do the same amount of times on each side. So we just did three. This now this one here is probably where it might be advantageous. Four. Five. It might be advantageous to um, do five on one side, five on the other. I still don't really like to do that, but um, if I have to, I have to. Um, so we're going to come back through. Uh, Re-oil your stand if you need to. And you're going to come down and across. You're doing the same thing as you did with the big wet stand. Just a little, this, this helps you keep your angles a little better. We're using a 20 degree on that. We would do that until it was done. And what did I say? You always wipe your knife off before you go to the next stand. So right now we're going to go to the fine. And I'm a big uh, believer in, in a good amount of oil on it. So make sure that base is in there. So now we're going to go down and across. Um, rather than fighting with uh, trying to get it the whole way across, I'd rather come. Um, one way you know you're up too far is you hit that red knob. You know that you're up too far. I would rather bring it down and across twice. So we're going to do it again, flip it over, and it fits tight, but that's good. That's what you want it to do. We're going to flip it over, and we'll try to go again. I always work from the 
back of the knife forward, always. It's just a preference. It helps me to make sure I sharpen the whole of the knife. There's three, that's four, five. I believe that's what we did on the other side. And then we're gonna wipe it. Now, I'm not trying to sharpen this, I'm only trying to show you uh, the uh, how it works. Then in order to get the knife out, it clamps in, is you turn this knob and you can pull your knife out. And it's already putting a pretty good edge on it and that was pretty dull. You know how I know it's dull? My wife is using it. So there we go, we uh, wiped off our stands. And I should say with these stands here uh, and Lansky and for the, the uh, flat stands here, the wet stands, uh, you wipe them off with a cloth. Uh, you try not to use anything that has uh, that will leave uh, like paper towels or anything that'll leave uh, uh, you know little bits and pieces on there because it will get in your way of sharpening uh, later on. Um, and then actually, what I did say here was uh, when we're all done, we go ahead and we take it across the steel, and it was already starting to come back here a little bit. That's not razor sharp, but uh, I didn't work very long there. I was only showing you the technique. So I've packed up everything back in my box here with that, cleaned up my stones, um, and now I'm uh, all ready to go for hunting season or fishing or whatever it is that you're going to do. Um, if you're sharpening uh, your kitchen knives, um, you know, take your time. Don't change that angle on it. And uh, every once in a while, you want to take it across the steel. Keep that angle nice and slow all the way to the back. And... Um, if it does start to dull a little bit and you do have a diamond steel two to three times across two to three times across on your magnetic steel or ceramic steel is really all that you need. One other thing I realized that I didn't say um, when you're using a stone more is not better more longer is not better uh, to stand there and work a, a knife for 20 minutes on the core stone is really not necessary. Normal, under normal use, a core stone, you're only going to need to take it across five or six times, uh, maybe eight at the most, 10 if it's very, very dull. Um, and on your medium stone, uh, six to eight times uh, on each side, and then on your fine uh, part of your stone, six to eight times. So, hey, I hope you found this uh, video informative. And objective is my whole goal here. And part of the whole goal of uh, Spent Shell Hunting Productions and doing these videos is to show you real life, real time um, videos here on on things that we have key interest in. You know, hunting and fishing and the, the paraphernalia that goes with it. Um, we don't always shoot things. We don't always get, but that's hunting. Uh, if, it were, uh, if we didn't uh, go out and there were some days where we didn't, uh, get to shoot. We didn't really get to shoot at anything or see anything. Well, if we saw it all the time and got to shoot all the time, then we'd be called shooting, not hunting. A good friend of mine says that all the time. Um, so I want you to be safe. Turkey season's coming up. Be safe out there in the woods. One thing I do want to say is uh, support your local gun groups, the NRA. Uh, they're the ones that are out there fighting for our constitutional rights. And uh, one other thing that I wanted to say is I see uh, a lot of anti-gunners and a lot of people who are new gun purchasers out there now, especially during this coronavirus outbreak uh, where uh, the people's fears are running rampant, um, is uh, they're changing their minds. Some, hopefully maybe some of these people change their mind about being against the uh, Second Amendment and against uh, gun ownership um, when it came down to the point where it was time to, should I protect my family or not? The, but the big thing that I want to say is, Please go get some training on that, uh, on your firearm. Learn how to use it. There's many good sites on the internet, on YouTube, that really talk about gun safety and uh, the do's and the don'ts of guns because you uh, had to get training to drive a car, for instance. Um, and here you got a firearm uh, and you have no training on it um, and you're bound to do something wrong and that's when people get hurt. Uh, it's usually when uh, people are acting, um, I don't know how to say it, other than stupid with them, uh, clowning around with them, um, or they are uninformed about the firearm that they have, um, and then somebody gets hurt. Please, if you're a new gun owner, welcome to the community. Um, please 
go get some training, read up some training on it, and get advised on how to use the, the firearm. It's not a natural born instinct to, to know how to handle a firearm. So be good, be careful out there, and uh, we'll be coming up with some more videos here in the very near future.